The time is now 7 p.m. on uh, Tuesday, the 27th of, Ju of June, and this regular <coughs> meeting of the El Campbell Independent School Board, Board of Trustees is now called to order. Let the record show that this meeting was duly posted in accordance with Section 551.043 of the Texas Government Code with regards to posting of public meetings and that there is a quorum of members present. At this time, would you please rise for our opening prayer led by Mr. Brock, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this chance to come together to, to do the duty and the business of the school district. We thank you for, for this community that we live in and the, and the people that we that we serve, especially these young people. We ask that you help us to just keep them at the forefront of the decisions that we make and that we uh, carry out your will and just do, we would do as you would have us to do. Bless us, bless this meeting, bless all here. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> At regular meetings, the board allots 15 minutes to hear persons who desire to make public comments to the board that are not related to business or to items on the agenda for that, that night. Persons wishing to participate in this portion of the meeting sign up before the meeting and indicate their topic. Delegations of more than five persons shall appoint one person to present their board <coughs> to, to present their views to the board. No presentation shall exceed five minutes. We had somebody sign up. We did. Ms. Avendando, um, and you'd like to talk about concession stands. Um, just before we get going, I just want to make sure everybody under, understands how it has to work. Is that if you'll get to speak for five five minutes, I'll wave at you as, as if you get close to that. And there cannot be any back and forth between the board and us because that because your uh, your item's not on the agenda. Correct. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So I'm here on behalf of the Van Booster Club and Van Parent. Um, I brought this up to the agenda to the board um, in one of the beginning meetings last year. Um, and I know y'all looked it over. I know there was looks um, of how to enlarge the concession stands or make them more efficient. Um, and, and that's fine. I understand there's, there's um, problematic with that. Um, but I wanted tonight to address the air because it's a sweat box in there and the, the, the air quality is horrible for product. Um, and with the upcoming football season, that's something that we always worry about is you know stuff just sitting in there staling out. Um, and the other is um, video cameras, at least facing the concessions because we were broken into and we did have a brand new cooler damage that we have to And that would help to fix or alleviate that problem of knowing who breaks in because kids are there and semi parents till 10 o'clock at night working out running whatever um, and without super parent supervision who knows what they're really doing <laughs> so and we know it was someone that broke in because there was foot prints on it they looked at the gate they broke into it and they crushed our cooler so um, Safety is a concern, um, obviously theft is a concern. The air, even, I mean, I know air conditioning is probably not an object that can be put in, um, but even mini splits for the little time that your kids are turned on. Because right now, parents won't volunteer because of it's too hot. And any given Friday night, we serve 5,000 plus people that come through our home gate. So this season we only have five home games, so it's less. Um, but next year that'll change because of flip flops. So just those two items that we'd like to be recognized. Thank you for continuing to show up and visit about that. Yes, for sure. No Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, that brings us to our favorite part of the meeting, which is recognition. Uh, we have a couple of groups to an individual and then a group to recognize and uh, we'll start with the individual and 
I think everybody understands that we're going to recognize Miss Vicki Lemus for her uh, service to the, the district and the board specifically. Uh, 31 years in El Campo ISD. Uh, stand up, please. <laughs> Thirty-one years in El Campo ISD and uh, five years service serving the board and the superintendent's office, but five years serving the board, I, I I can't thank you enough. The board can't thank you enough. The things that uh, the information that you get for us, the 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 manner in which you communicate with us is is has been top notch, and and we really appreciate it. And uh, because of that, we uh, the board got a small little token of our front. appreciation. <laughs> Just so everyone knows, that's the first time in three years I've been able to tell them what to do. <laughs> so, this is, congratulations on your retirement, and this is for you. folks are the state qualifiers for the for the state track meet in Austin we were well represented in Austin this year which does not happen every year and it definitely doesn't happen to every school across the state so we're we're, we're certainly proud of them um, I think uh, coach Cavazos is here and uh, are you gonna yes he is All right. yes, I'm just making sure I was, I was pointing in the right direction for having us this evening uh, but I do want to start ladies first uh, recognizing our state qualifiers, um, Madison Holmes. You want to? She coming up? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, she's coming up, and she's here with DeAndre and Tiffany Brown. They got to come up here. Uh, Madison qualified in the 200 meter dash, and she finished in fourth place um, at the state track meet, running her fastest time of the year. So it's uh, definitely a, a big accomplishment for our girls' track team, um, for our track team in general. Um, but we're, we're very, very proud of what she's done um, this year, and we look forward to, to things she's going to be doing next year. Yeah. Right. I think I know the answer, but what year are you? Like, what, what, a, what, a, what class? She is a sophomore. You'll be a sophomore. That's, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So, Gabe, get in there for the pictures now. <laughs> Come on. Uh, y'all are fine. Can mom and dad split apart a little bit? Because I don't want y'all hiding behind the folks. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Coach, get in there. Yeah, come on, Coach. Coach Parker, there, 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 there we go. There we go. There we go. because my son is a year younger than her and I've been at all most of our track meets that she's been to and when I first went to the one I saw her I saw her run one time and I called my brother and said you gotta you gotta come to this next junior high track meet there's a girl who's winning the hundred by 60 yards <laughs> <laughs> um, and then our next recognition would be uh, Oliver Miles um, he is here Sisters, you have to come up, Yana. Yes. And then she's got, um, of course, they've got a bigger support group. <laughs> right? Jake is here, Angela's here, um, to support all the athletes. And tell, tell us about the events. Well, uh, Oliver qualified in the triple jump. Um, and at the regional track meet, he jumped 49 feet 2 inches. 
which set a new school record. Uh, but at the state track meet on his very last attempt, last jump of the day, he jumps a 50 foot 10 inch uh, triple jump to win the state champion triple yeah. jumper. Wow. Fifty feet. Some of Southwest flights aren't that far. I'd like us also to recognize Coach Cavazos, <laughs> who stepped in a, uh, towards the end of the season and took on the head coaching responsibilities um, with our change in head football coaches. So we were very much appreciative of his efforts and the hard work they put in. And of course, look at what he did with with uh, Oliver. Goes from 49-2 to almost 51 feet. So like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't that right, Oliver? <laughs> Took both, took both of those athletes from square one to, yeah. the, sta to the state track. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Gabe. Sometimes it's best to get out of the way, right? <laughs> That's right. All right, so item number four is our consent agenda. Um, I don't know if everybody else... Well, they can, they're more than welcome you to are stay. Y'all are welcome to stay as long as you want and watch local government in action, but... <laughs> If you if you do want to leave, we will not think that. You're but if dinner is calling yeah, you, we will, not think, we will not think that you're rude if you do if you do elect to go. If we were you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, coaches. Thank you for being here. Item number four is our consent agenda. According to, to local policy BE, a consent agenda is provided that includes items of a routine and or re reoccurring nature of one action item. Board members have been furnished with background material for each of the items. Unless a board member requests an item be withdrawn for individual con consideration, items are acted upon with one vote without separate discussion. Action. Actions on the items withdrawn will be considered under one singular vote. Has, is there anybody anything that uh, anybody wants to have withdrawn and considered individually? There being none. Well, can I mention one thing? I, I just want to uh, express to the board my appreciation to Coach Reed for all of his work on the supplemental compensation package and um, doing his darndest to stay within a budget and yet rectify some coaching disparities and, and bring people to equity. I think he's done a phenomenal job. I just wanted to mention that in public so that people know about the hard work you put in behind the scenes. Thanks, Appreciate that. Thank you, Coach. Noted. Um, I'll entertain a motion. Please we approve the consent agenda. I have a motion by Mr. Dorton and a second by Ms. Smith. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, save sign. Motion carries unanimously. That brings us down to item number five, which is presentation items. Uh, first item on that is the school resource, resource officer yearly report. Uh, who's either or I can do it or you can do it so um, board members you should have gotten the, the, uh, the yearly report what I wanted to mention is the fact that um, we've had a great working relationship um, with the El Campo PD we feel that that's going to be a continue with our new chief just being named um, we've got four school resource officers um, one at Hutchins, one that splits Myatt and Northside, one at the middle school and one at the high school. They do a phenomenal job. They communicate well with all the principals. Um, it's, a, it's a good working relationship and I think you can see by their activity log a total of 5,859 total things that they've dealt with. 1,325 at the high school, 1,696 at the middle school, 1646 at Northside and 1192 at Hutchins. It, it, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but is Maya included with Hutchins or why is Maya in there? Just because they do very few okay. visits. It's included with Northside, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's included the north side. Myatt's included the north side. No, no, yes, Myatt's included with the, the north side yes, school they, resource right, office. Yes, they, yes. They, okay. So you can see the, you know, they, some people think they're probably more heavily involved in the <clears> high school, but you can see that in fact is not accurate. They, they, they split evenly amongst all of our campuses. Now, <clears throat> I will say that um, Northside is a little bit higher because they're doing two campuses. But, um, we, we do have a great relationship with, with our SRO team. It's, it's, <coughs> it, obviously it's grown from just one singular SRO to now where we have now, and it's been, it's been a great thing for, for our campuses. I was visiting last week with a colleague of mine that it lives in Florida, and they were almost kind of an identical looking school district to what we are, and and they were, somehow we got on the subject of, of schools, and they have, they have an SRO <coughs> at every campus, and their SROs are prohibited from, like, interacting in a non-police fashion with their kids, like they, they're not supposed to build a you know, have rapport with them and everything like that. And he was asking me about that. I said, ours is the exact opposite. We're trying, we're, we want our SROs to have a relationship with the kids so they can, number one, you know, they'll talk to them if something, if they know something, but also, you know, he, that, that SRO may be the person that they trust on campus. You know, that, the guy that, or the, the, the person that's, that, that kid feels like, hey, I could, if I needed something, I could probably talk to all, officer on my campus. I think that's a really cool deal and I think it's a good thing for our community for those kids to build a positive relationship with a police officer when given an opportunity. So I, there, obviously there's a, there, are, there are other ways of, of <coughs> this for this model to look but I, I'm happy that ours looks the way it does. Any questions on the report? That is not an action item so. Uh, nope, just a report. We have the progress and plans for safety and security. Um, yes, um, we actually, tonight I'm going to talk to you about something that we're getting ready to do in the district as far as signage, being able to label all of our buildings. It's something that's been um, brought to our attention uh, about being able to, you know, identify, you know, doors and, and like in the event that we were to be able to uh, <coughs> need the cops to come on our campuses, like, yeah, each building means something to us because we're there every day, and but it may not mean anything to to a SWAT team. Right. So just being able to label our buildings, being able to label our entrances, uh, we're also uh, in the process of getting all of our our signage, and we're going to be looking for the locations that we're going to be placing our our signage for the Guardian program around each of our campuses. Uh, that signage will actually be going up uh, fairly quickly as soon as we. Uh, Get the signage. We're going to get that stuff installed. It will actually be installed prior to school. Uh, we also are in the process of getting our our ATVs uh, wrapped. Uh, that's taking place uh, right now. Um, and but the but and we're also in the process. We we we've got our our safes actually ordered uh, for the for the classrooms as well. Good. Great. <coughs> Questions. Comments. <coughs> That moves us to number three on the presentation, which is the Guardian Program Training. You kind of alluded to that in that. Go yes, do you want to hit on some of this? <laughs> uh, we, are, we are actually uh, uh, in the process of uh, getting you know, all of our Guardians trained. Um, we will actually have, um, I believe, 17. Well, we don't, we don't have a certain number of Guardians. Right, right, right. So we've trained in several different groups, and we we will choose not to identify the total number of guardians. But we feel like we have a group of guardians who is extremely uh, committed, knowledgeable. They've been training this week. We trained some of them during the last week of May, and uh, we feel very strongly that they are all in it for the right reasons. As you all know, that psychological evaluations took place and our psychologists felt that this was a group, good group that had, um, that, that were engaging themselves in the Guardian program for the right reasons. 
and I can tell you that the first day of guardian trainings, <clears throat> the, the main topic that I took out of the training was um, moral versus immoral, that they have to get beyond the fact that they're potentially in a situation involving someone who has a weapon and they have a weapon, and what is the purpose? Is their purpose moral or is their purpose immoral? And so the insinuation is that the, the bad guy is immoral. He is coming with a weapon to do harm, <clears throat> and their purpose is moral, trying to keep someone from doing harm. So um, the, the training has included barricade training. It's included uh, training for um, being behind uh, obstacles like they would be in a school. Um, it was force on force, one on one, force on force, two on two, and then they will head to the range for a couple of days and then come and finalize the training, uh, which will exceed 40 hours. The training well, I can tell you, it's already exceeded uh, their daily rate for two days in a row. And so um, we're excited about these individuals and their commitment to the, to the training but we'll have an opportunity to be a part of talking about the popularity of the Guardian program. We'll have a, a, an opportunity to be a part of 1,700 schools now that are basically <clears throat> participating in the Guardian program, which is something that was basically questioned in a lot of communities. However, the state has basically now mandated whether you have a security officer on each campus or you be able to have a guardian that can actually count in that capacity. So with that being said, there's, there's, we're like 1,700 people, 1,700 schools. Yeah, gotcha. Not all of those districts go through the extensive training that we go through. Some districts actually go through the process of just basically saying, hey, we're just gonna arm our teachers with guns. But then you have you know, the, the decision that we actually made to be able to say, hey, we're going to train them, put them in the best situation possible. Uh, train them on combat, train them <coughs> on how to maneuver through the schools and, and do the different things. Sounds good. Good. Next item on uh, presentation items is uh, just a little information on the TEA inquiry into the 2017 tax ratification election <coughs> in TEA. C forty five point oh oh two one. And Demetri and I'll tag team on this again. <clears throat> Back in two thousand sixteen August, um, following the spring um, of, of debate, was a decision to roll forward with the tax ratification election, which passed in August of twenty sixteen for the fiscal year twenty seventeen. At that point, <clears throat> the school district moved into our tax rate money out of the INS side and into the M&O side. And basically, it gen because the, the pennies generate different amounts of money, it generated a little bit more on the M&O side than it did on the INS side. And since that point, uh, 362 schools that have passed the tax ratification of election have been now directed to over the next three years, move those pennies back into the INS side from the MO side because uh, apparently, uh, when he was um, whatever he was, the G Attorney General, Greg Abbott wrote an article about how you could do this. And so many school districts did a tax ratification election. Now the legislature has come out and directed the TEA to say, no, shouldn't have done that. Can't use the, the taxes <coughs> from INS and M&O, and you can't use the M&O taxes for paying back of an, of an INS. So we're one of those school districts that passed that election, and we're in the process of having to rectify that. <coughs> I'm not at five minutes. Thank God this is over. Uh, next is uh, curriculum and instruction, an annual report on the gifted and talented in your board packet, you should have a copy of the, um, the report. I'm just going to go through it and kind of highlight some of the key things. Um, but if you have any questions along the way, please stop me. 
Um, on page one is our enrollment of the GT students by grade level um, over the last three years. So you can see that our numbers have stayed pretty pretty similar over the last three years, and we're sitting about 8% of our total enrollment, which is, which is a good number. Um, on page two, you have a demographic breakdown. Uh, we have the ethnicity breakdown. Um, we're predominantly have more white students, obviously, in the group than the other, and we need to look at getting <coughs> our other students identified. So, um, at the bottom of page two, these are our TS TPSP projects um, by grade level, so you can see which um, group is doing which project each year. Um, in the past, we let the teachers kind of pick, and then we found that it was they were all kind of getting to one topic. So every year, the kids were doing something on animals. And so and Laura, yeah, <laughs> field <laughs> so Laura and would, yeah, um, <laughs> Laura went back and kind of structured this a little better. Um, we did make some changes in the seventh and eighth grade um, this year, so there's a little bit different than they've done in the past, but they stayed within the same parameters. So we felt good about those changes. Um, as we move forward, high school is going to be doing all of their projects through their English advanced classes. Um, it aligns with their TEKS. They're already having to do research in those classes, so they're just going to take it to a more depth. They're going to present in different ways um, than just the average classes. On page three, um, you can see the number of students that took um, the college entrance exams at grade level. Um, it also tells you our numbers of teachers that are GT certified. At the bottom, that is our state assessment results from last year because we don't have anything concrete yet to, to give you. So um, our goal, of course, is with these students is we want to get as many at the mastered level as possible. Um, these are higher performing students, so that's our expectation of them is to be at that level. On page four starts kind of a, a standard, um, it's the standards that we have to go by, and so it's analysis of all of that. And so basically the next few pages are, here's the standard, this is what it looks like, and then we kind of evaluate ourselves on it. Um, so just to point out a few things, on page four in the middle, um, we kind of give you all of the uh, dates that we did all of our testing this year. So you can see um, we take care of all of it in the spring, screening and testing. And then on page five, at the bottom, it discusses the um, GT determination committee and who all needs to be a part of that. And I just also wanted to note to you that whenever these committees get together to review the data, it's all anonymous. Like they, it's it's done by a number ID, so the the group does not know who the students are that they're reviewing the data on. Um, it kind of keeps it more just fair across the board, and we're not we're not judging based on who they are. So. Um, it's a good process we have in place. On page six, um, at the top on 2.1c, I made a note that we need to add more information to our web page for next year. I feel like we don't we don't have that information there, so that's something that would be taken care of. Um, on page seven, um, kind of hit on this when I talked about TPSP, but at the bottom it tells you that that's the projects we follow and that the high school will be doing the projects through the advanced and AP classes. Um, and then on page eight, um, we had an area that we need to improve on and that was basically we did not have all of our teachers at the middle school and high school in the core areas with their basic 30 hours. Um, and so we put out information for the summer how they can attain that. Um, and we've also given the, the principals a directive that you just can't do it. Like when you get ready to schedule kids, just if the, G, if the teacher is not GT certified, we've got to keep those kids out of that teacher's class, um, unless that teacher is going to be working on her certification in the process of the year. Um, but it's just a way to avoid all that. We do have enough teachers <coughs> certified that we can we can manage to take care of that. Um, on page nine, I. Uh, put the our annual update is going is scheduled for September 1st and this is a six hour update that all the teachers have to get that are that carry um, GT students um, we also allow them to do an uh, to do it this summer if they wanted to and get it taken care of so. and then at the end um, is our parent community awareness information um, we did have our showcases this year at Northside and Middle School um, 
mine it was difficult to do because they don't identify kids till the spring those kids start march 1st is their first day of services so by the time they finish their projects it's already they're already into may so it's kind of like can you find the time to get it or not is how they do it um, but we are going to look into hutchins getting theirs scheduled this next year um, so if they have one open to everybody can come watch um, is there anything that you want in this annual board report that you're not getting for the future Well, I, I need to, again, publicly commend Alicia for, this is a new program for her, and she's done yeoman's work um, to, to get everything organized. I think that we're making some huge strides. You can see that there were some specific areas that we felt needed improvement, and she has gone out of her way to make sure. I know she's done great communication to all of our teachers. So if somebody comes back and says, well, we didn't know we had to get trained or we didn't know the training took place, then my comment back to them would be, did you check your email? Did you, because they have all, I know it. So if, if I know it and I'm not a GT teacher um, and I'm just being carbon copied, I know that they should know those things too. Do we, do we require everybody to? Just if you're going to have the GT students <coughs> in the core classes. Okay, so you're, do you need help doing this? What about my secretary? Because <laughs> I was just wondering if, like, each campus, like each a, campus does have like a coordinator, like one of the counselors okay. is typically the coordinator. So they're my contact okay. mainly for when we get things going. Well, she's not doing it all part. alone. Yes. She's just organizing. <laughs> it's just but me, yeah. It's just, yeah, putting it oh, all together. Yes. If no, each definitely. Campus has they do. <coughs> they do. Yes. Yeah. They okay. do. And she communicates. I mean, she communicates with the principals. Yeah. She communicates with the counselors, and she communicates with the GT teachers. So there's a there's a mass email that she generates, and she's not emailing them once a week. Rich knows how this kind of goes. You're not sending out things every day or once a week. It's 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 sporadic and periodic. Um, but the the spring GT showcase, um, my recollection is that happened just prior to Thanksgiving, right after Thanksgiving and prior to Christmas about, let's prep this, let's plan this. Yeah. So plenty of months in advance. <clears throat> this has been a, I mean, we, this has been a conversation with this board for quite a while. And, and uh, I think we ha we are making strides and, and that's good to see. So I appreciate the, the effort. Um, one of the main things is particular in the in the, the elementary levels and through through the middle school is getting those kids enough challenging curriculum and, and the rigor and everything that they need. And I, th I do think the I did think I think the district has made some strides there, uh, and obviously continuing to monitor that because it is one of those things that if if you don't monitor it, it's, it's, it, <coughs> it kind of goes away because it's not like it's not like that's the only thing that campus has going on. ESL we do, but GT we typically identify a group, and Paul's here so he can address it if he has anything to add, but we typically identify a group of teachers that teach certain types of courses right. because they're more likely to well, be high the school, ones. High school's easier with the creative. In middle school, but, but we've gone more to a, a the GT. They're clustered, aren't they? They're, 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 we're they're, going they've to been more clustered. So clustered. We, we might be trying to kind of clusters a little spread out a little more mm -hmm. elementary um, yes just because these students get together in first grade and they're together forever and so by the time they get to middle school some of the stuff. research that <laughs> that we have presented to our elementary teachers in specific is uh, that the GT research basically talks about um, trying to keep clusters of GT kids between four 
to nine. So if you have, just uh, throw a hypothetical number of 27 kids that are identified in a grade level as GT, you must have a minimum of three teachers that are GT certified. So you could divide 27 by three and get <coughs> nine. You could have a maximum of seven teachers and divide 27 by uh, 28 by seven and get four kids per class. So you could have anywhere between three to seven teachers GT. The issue comes down that it's not recommended you put special ed kids in with GT kids. It's recommended that those two groups go to separate teachers, but the remaining kids in that class should be a combination of high, medium, and low. So the special ed kids should have high, medium, and low, and the GT kids should have high, medium, and low. But you should not have two and needs. <coughs> GT has specific needs, and special ed has specific needs. They don't recommend you intergroup those in a clusters this year. Maybe get it right next. Well, but this is, yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> but but that's, uh, that's the most recent, right. probably for the last three or four years, five years, maybe, that they're recommending. So that's what our principals are trying to do um, with Alicia's leadership. So it, to me, it sounded very, um, very academically sound. And I've been supportive of their efforts to do that. Any questions, discussion? Thank you for your talk. Yep, thank you. Catherine Kids Parks, uh, we have a small summer school. Brief, oh, summer school, brief update on summer school. Oh, it's still me. So summer school, we just wrapped up <coughs> last week, the big bulk of summer school. Um, we had 223 kids between pre-K and fourth grade, and they were all housed at Hutchins. And then 216 kids between fifth grade and eighth grade, and they were all at the middle school. Um, we still have bilingual summer school going on. They have to go 120 hours, so they have an extra week, but they do. They are also at Hutchins. Um, at the high school, we had 54 students do credit recovery, um, 20 kids in Spanish 1, and 20 kids in Spanish 2. Um, we have EOC testing. It started last week. It's continuing this week. Um, I'm not sure how many kids actually showed up to test, but this is how many kids needed to come test. So in algebra, we had 46, English 1, 61, English 2, 43, biology 17, and U.S. history 14. Um, so in July, we'll have MIAT, we'll have Kinder Jump Start, and that'll be regular ed kids and uh, bilingual kids. And then our ESY has two more weeks in July as well. So an overview of our summer school. Now these were kids that need, I mean, there's so many. So it's a combination of things. So you have House Bill 4545 out there that says if a student does not pass their STAR test, mm -hmm. they need to have 30 hours of intervention per subject. Well, while this is going on, House, House Bill 1416 came out and adjusted that a little bit. Um, so basically, a lot of the campuses invited the kids that they felt might be in danger of passing so they could start getting that intervention in place so they don't have to do all of it after school when school starts. Um, so that's the bulk of it. And then others, maybe attendance or grades from the school year. Attendance is a main thing, is a big one. It's a big one, yes. Um, and, you know, pre, if you're pre K through four with an attendance problem, it ain't a kid problem. The, uh, Capturing, <coughs> capturing Kids Hearts. Okay, so Capturing Kids Hearts, uh, we recently had a two-day training for all of our new <coughs> hires and anybody in our district that hadn't been trained yet. Um, so we were excited about that. It went very well. Um, Sean Dumpy, one of our presenters or trainers that's been working with us the last couple years, he was able to come in and train them, so that made it even better that they were hearing it from him. Currently, we have um, 242 professionals in our district that are trained, and we have 33 still to train, um, but I have to give a shout out to the middle school because right now, up until the day we did our training, they are 100% trained for the professional staff members. Um, so that was pretty awesome. Um, Myatt still needs three, Hutchins needs eight, Northside needs three, and high school needs 19. So Even the new hires at Judy yes. Middle School? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She got them all to come. Getting them done, right? Yes, yeah. yes. So, um, so proud of the, the progress we've made on it, getting the 
everybody trained because they understand the language then as we're walking around the campus when we're asking certain things. Um, we also have leadership blueprint coming up July 13th and that will be for our leadership team. Um, it's a recharge because we did it last year. It's an opportunity for us to see any growth that we've made in our leadership skills as well. Questions, discussion? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Update on the high school class writing procedures and counselor responsibilities. <coughs> to involve. Um, my dad, I guess, is Paul. Um, you know, we're implementing the new class writing procedures that y'all adopted back in was that April, I believe. Um, and so that will start with this year's freshman class. That will count just the four classes for weighted GPA. Everything will still count, but as far as for the weighted GPA, it'll just be those four classes. Um, you know, there's been discussion about counselor responsibilities and roles um, possibly going to uh, grade levels. I think in the discussions that I've had with the counselors, what I'm looking at is showing up some of those duties. Um, it just, in looking at it with the high school administration, um, thought that keeping it with the current alpha split was the best possibility for us and the reason why let's say my in my family my oldest two were one when one was a freshman the other one was a sophomore and so if I have a different counselor for each of those kids then I'm going to have to go and meet with two different counselors but yet now my other one's five years younger when she comes through I might even have a third one but if not if I come through and I built a relationship with a counselor then I've had that relationship and that relationship continues there, I know there's some things we want them to improve on, and those are some duties that uh, and discussions we're going to have in July and August. With them. Questions? <coughs> All right, we'll go. Uh, we'll move on to discussion and action items. Uh, first item being the approval the new ECHS course offering, business law, and agricultural power stems necessary for level two industry-based certifications. <coughs> on this and feel free to jump in. Um, so basically, I'm more, um, asking for approval to add these two new courses for this fall. As um, the accountability is changing for CCMR and there's a phase-in period, and as we go into this next school year, these students are gonna have to have a level two course in their path and their uh, aligned program, of aligned study. program of study to get their certification and reach their CCMR certificate, uh, CCMR credit. So right now, it cannot be some of the level two classes that we have, and so we're needing to add these two classes so those students will be able to take that class, get the credit, get their CCMR credit, um, and allow them to have that when they're done. Um, one, it's accountability for us, but it's also a certification for them when they're done. So that's pretty much the reason for us doing this. But as we move forward, we're gonna have to look at this more in depth because the requirements are even deeper for the following year and the year after that. So for the senior class to be, they have to have at least one level two or higher course in that program of study. Previously, when Mr. Wells was principal, we offered Dan, everyone had to go through that. A lot of these students, and when they were younger, got a certification, Microsoft Office, Word or Microsoft Office Excel. That certificate is actually sunsetting in August of 2024, but we don't offer any level two courses. So those students that have that certification would have to get some other type of meet CCMR a different way. And so to me, it just seems like the easier way is have them complete a course. And not we have, have to go teachers ahead. the teachers to teach them. Yes, we have, we're able to teach it. I move that we approve both courses that are presented. Motion. 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 While Mr. Wells is passing this out, I, 
I'd like to uh, express to the board uh, how much work Demetrius has put into this. This has been this has been a months long process to uh, and as as everyone probably at the table is well aware. Um, the legislature has chosen to not do anything regarding school funding for uh, the 23-24 school year. So we have no new funds that are coming to us. We are going to be based upon old funding formulas. And so it's been a um, difficult road to traverse for us as we've tried to um, develop a budget for 23-24. Uh, in addition to that, you will all probably know that there's $33 billion with a B in the rainy day fund and a $26.7 million excess funds in this last biennium budget. So close to $60 billion out there that is unaccounted for and so um, the legislature talked about giving raises and so much had to do X Y and Z and we haven't seen or heard any of that and through all of that Demetric has stayed on target um, presenting to you what he's presenting to you this evening so so uh, you're gonna see in front of you the salary schedules um, and, and the main one being the teacher salary schedule, uh, which actually affects, uh, you know, the, the masses. Um, <coughs> what this raise is going to do is going to cost us right at about one point two million dollars. Um, but we feel very, very confident <coughs> after looking at um, preliminary values. Uh, when I say looking at preliminary values, um, we were last year we uh, when we did our budget. <coughs> Taxable values were roughly $1.4 billion taxable that we could uh, generate our money off of. Uh, but with the increase in um, property taxes, the first, the first number that came back to us was like $1.9 billion. Uh, so that is almost, well, it's, it's a $500 million increase. So with that $500 million increase, what will happen is we'll compress the tax rate because that's the, the state's going to tell you what you can charge on the m and side. And so once they do that, we're going to be generating a little bit more money because of the increase in our values. Even though that m and rate will look like it's going down, uh, but we, we also have to be mindful that we're going to have to add that money back that we owe on the INS side to be able to catch up. We have a three year window to be able to do that, but we do feel like uh, we'll have an opportunity to capture some more of that, that debt uh, because of our values being so high. So if our values are, are super high, uh, it makes all the sense in the world to be able to try to capture <coughs> that, that, that money back on the INS side while those values are high. I'm not saying that they're gonna go down, but in the event that the values were to go down, you missed an opportunity to uh, cash in on the INS side, okay? So, but we feel very, very confident in the money that we're gonna be able to generate, and uh, we will be bringing in a, um, a preliminary budget next month, and then we're, we're going to have a discussion about a time uh, that we could possibly do a budget workshop so we can go through and explain how all of this stuff's gonna actually work. And then, uh, of course, in, But my, uh, what we're recommending today is uh, the consideration for a 4% midpoint pay increase for all classified employees. Discussion, questions? I don't remember, but when did, when did they certify the upgraded values? So that will, we'll actually get that in July. July, yeah. So we'll get that from the uh, county. In the end of July, probably. Yeah, in, in, usually around the, the last week of July. And, and I'd like to clarify, Mr. Wells just said classified employees. I think he meant to say all classifications. All classifications, yeah, yeah. Of employees. All classifications. 
because we have four or five people in this room behind him that are like, what, what? What am I, what am I classified as? <laughs> any, uh, any questions, concerns? I want to I wanna say thank you to Demetric and Mr. Callahan for all the work they've done. Uh, and over the, over the past few years with Mr. Callahan, a, a strategy and a goal and sticking to that uh, and progressing toward you know making sure our our uh, our staff and our, our employees are, are rewarded as they should be so I, I, I appreciate you sticking sticking to a, a, a plan on that um, I'll entertain a motion uh, to uh, consider to adopt a four percent midpoint pay pay increase for all classifications of employees I'd say move that we do that I have a, a motion by Ms. Mahavis and a second by Mr. Dorkett. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. And I would recommend the board that we go to number three <coughs> because I think that from Demetrius' standpoint, um, we, we must combine these as one item because really what we're trying to do is, um, as you'll recall, last year we gave a 6% raise. Uh, this is less, it's only 4%, but you'll recall that our reason for the 6% last year is we felt we would have time over time to, um, to absorb that into our continuation budget. Right. We're now reaching a point where when ESSER funds go away, we're going to have to pick all of these funds up out of our own pocket so this second part, which is a uh, recruitment and retention bonus, I think is what needs to be dealt with next so that the board can then um, explain that to the employees. And I agree. Mr. Callahan and I have discussed that. I, I think we need to, item number two is the, is the superintendent's compensation package. We think it makes sense to table this until next month when the rest of the compensation package has taken shape. Because obviously the board hadn't adopted any of this before tonight so once we get that adopted those numbers become real numbers we can we can we can figure out kind of what the, the the budget will be more developed in a month's time and then we can we can pick that item up so not a reflection at all about our feeling yay or nay toward the compensation package for the for the superintendent but probably a responsible move on the board's part to have a real a real developed budget of more consideration so great uh, so the next item is, so item number, I guess, do I need a motion? <coughs> Can I do that? You can just stretch it. Okay, so we will uh, we will have item number uh, B2 on next month's agenda as well. Uh, discuss, discussion and consideration of a $2,000 recruitment and retention bonus for all professional contract employees and $1,500 recruitment and retention bonus for all auxiliary personnel to be paid out of ESSER funds. This will obviously be a, a short-term strategy. Once ESSER funds will stop, this will go away. Correct. So ESSER 2 will be actually expiring uh, at the beginning of this fall. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have an opportunity to be, uh, to be able to give all of our professional contract employees a $2,000 recruitment and retention bonus and all of our uh, auxiliary personnel. And so that basically means that whether you're a cafeteria worker, whether you're a bus driver, and what we're going to do is we're gonna do that opposite of our pay cycle. So that we're gonna do it two weeks prior to uh, being paid so that it will not actually just be added into their check and exactly. it's gonna be a separate check run. So it'll be able to maximize what they actually feel as opposed to giving it to them in their check. Because if we give it to them in their check, then all of a sudden, they're going to say, well, you gave us $2,000, but we really only got this, this much taxes, and TRS, yeah. and everything else. Yeah. So <clears> we're, <throat> going to, uh, we're going to give it to them uh, on a different check run. This is the one-time one deal. One, it's the one, one time, time, time for this year. For this year. And then we're doing it for current contracted employees, or it's for the fall? No. Anybody that's going to be coming back, and anybody that's coming to us. Okay. But we're going to do it in September? We're going to do it in August. August, okay. August uh, somewhere around August 11th. Yeah. And, and it's a one-time check? Yes. One-time check. And, and uh, you'll recall that two years ago, 
in December when other districts were doing this, we chose to put that money into something that would be continual long term. Well, now we're another year and a half down the road. We we are trying to be fiscally responsible. We're given a four percent raise, which is <coughs> not typical for us. We haven't typically given that much. So we're still given what we think is a healthy raise, but at the same time, this addition kind of puts us up in that six percent total compensation right. area. So, but we're not making it part of their continual package. The other thing is, uh, Rich, I think you bring up a good point. By doing it in August, there's a lot of new teachers, new employees that won't get their first paycheck until September. Right. And so this will just be a little shot in the arm. Right. Good. Right. Good. Good idea. You said, so the 4% was 1.2? Mm -hmm. what, what is this? This is about 975000 so right at a million dollars. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion. I have a motion by Ms. Smith uh, to adopt a $2,000 recruitment and retention bonus for all professional contract employees and a $1,500 recruitment and retention bonus for all auxiliary personnel to be paid out of ESSER funds. Second. I have a second by Mr. Dubrock. <coughs> all in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Good work. Awesome. The next, uh, the, the next item, uh, <coughs> board members, y'all have been uh, furnished background to review the list of the final and complete list of graduates in the class of 2023. Mr. Callum, <coughs> is there anything that needs to be discussed here? Or? We just want to make sure the board has the final, because remember, we had the uh, zone of uncertainty, so right. we're at 282 graduates. Now understand, board, there will be a second list that potentially can come out that would be summer grads, but they would be coming out after this set of testing cycle is tested and done, but that'll help down the road three, five years when somebody comes back and says, who graduated in 2023 will have a specific list. And of course, anybody who graduated in summer would be a little bit separate, but we would be able to keep all of those separate and. Uh, I can tell you that uh, Paul has been working with Victoria and Ann over here. We need to commend Ann for her work on, on developing this list. It's not as easy as just pushing the button, is it, Rich? We need a motion for that. Yes. I move that we approve the final and complete list of graduates of the class of 2020. <coughs> motion by Mr. Dubrock, and a second by Mr. Hobbits. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, that brings us to discussion and consideration for approval of contracting with Flexile for Light Speed Learning Safety Wellness Bundle. Okay, well, Donald, you're up. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're, we've been, we started piloting, basically the, it's for web filtering, classroom management, uh, student safety, and as they offer a uh, analytics product as well. And we started piloting it probably back in January at the middle school for uh, the safety and classroom <coughs> filtering. And then we captured the data for about a month on the analytics. And we had positive feedback from the teachers that we let pilot it on the classroom portion. Filtering is more or less filtering. There's not, I mean, a web filter is a web filter, but the, the student safety piece and the uh, classroom management were, I, like I said, we got positive feedback on that. And it can, instead of going with three different vendors that we do now, which is Gaggle for student safety, GoGuardian for filtering, and iBot for filtering, we can go with one vendor and save about um, around $20,000 a year, actually, so. Nice work. Yeah, save us some money. <laughs> You're in one of those lives at work where you can pretty much tell us anything. <laughs> 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 well, no, I, I, but I do think, I oh, do. Anthony had a question for us. No, I didn't think, Anthony would like uh, Anthony would like to look at the report. <laughs> I, I do think that the board needs to recognize all the work Donald has done, and I can tell you it's not just Donald; it's Chris too, but it's also Alicia and Demetric working with them, because when we first started looking at all of the software we had. <laughs> 
we have software that fills up an entire page, single spaced, in, it looks to me like it's eight font, but it probably isn't, but it just looks enormous. And so um, you can see in the consent agenda, you passed the power school to try to reduce some of those. And I don't want the board to think, it all costs money. But what we're looking at here is saving $20,000. Yeah. And Alicia's power school is saving us, you know, it's not a lot, but it's five or $10,000. Well, our goal is to save in as many of those areas because then we can turn those around into compensation packages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll, thanks, Donald. Yes. Thank you. I'll move that we approve contract with Flexile for life student learning, safety, and the wellness bundle. A motion by Mr. Dubrat. I have a second. By uh, Mr. Dorothy. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Next item is discussion and, and approval of Hunton distribution to complete air conditioning upgrades to High School, Northside, and Hutchins. And my, I might recommend this room as well. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> Mark. Basically, we have an opportunity to do some refurbishments on uh, air conditioner and air fresh uh, fresh air units at three campuses. High school is the main uh, focus of this. It's refurbishing the chiller towers. Um, we're keeping the housing and, and the, some of the main components of the systems, but we're basically replacing the guts and anything that could wear out because um, some of those are reaching the point where they're going to start wearing out. And so by refurbishing this, we're doing it for about a third of the cost of what it would cost to replace everything. So um, we got three bids. Uh, one of the issues uh, that we encountered is because we use hunting train services and, and materials for most of our uh, HVAC systems. Um, anybody that, that submits a com competing bid has to go buy their stuff from hunting train and then tack on their markup. So hunting train was the lowest. That's why there's such a big difference in the bids though, because the two competing bids have to go to hunting train and buy the materials from them and then mark it up and, and turn around and install it. So um, an anyway, like I said, it's, yeah. it's refurbishments, but basically when, at the, when, when the process is complete, it's like we're getting new units in, in several places. So what's, what's a lifespan typically on something like that? It, it depends on the, the piece of equipment that you're talking about, anywhere from 15 years to, to 20 to 25 years, depending on what you're talking about. <clears throat> so, and this is 100% ESSER funds, so uh, that's a, I mean, basically, you're getting a 15 years. <coughs> yeah. That's not on the district's dime. But right. This hunting deal sounds like a sounds like a good business to me. Yeah. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. To make. I'll move that we approve the uh, distribution complete air conditioning upgrades to the high school, north side. Second. I have a second on Mr. Irwin. Same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, that Be brings us down. To Before we go into closed session, I, I just want to go back to an item that Mr. Wells discussed earlier on the safety and security and, and tell the board um, about this particular building um, that there is a very crude and rudimentary drawing <coughs> of the main hallway out here. <laughs> Come on now, Mr. Dubrock. I, you can tell my art work and art skills were not, uh, were not highly valued through my academic career, nor, nor architectural drawing. But sure basically- not a church? Is that, <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is looking at it from above, it, towards the uh, south elevation. So the two doors that you see at the very top of the chalkboard or the whiteboard are going to be two new doors that are remote control access. Um, inside, <clears throat> you can see we built uh, an L-shaped foyer meeting area. So that person will be looking at those doors and they will be sitting there. The, the big black line to the right of that L-shape is actually a glass door. So that whole area will be glassed in. The door, you can see the dotted line on the left at the top, that can be closed and locked, just like this one over here, because that's what it is. That then glass door can be locked. 
This door can then be locked, and when people come in from the outside, the only thing they'll have access to is this room. And they have to come in through being buzzed in, which we would turn off during board meetings because it's open to the public. But basically, um, that whole area would become a reception area, and then the room behind that, uh, just to the left of that L, would become another office. Our goal at that point is to work on, ironically, the air conditioning in this building, <laughs> because it is old and it's three units outside, and then potentially, um, and there's only a couple of women here that were in this building, but the women have just one itty bitty tiny restroom over there, so our goal would be to tap into the, to the um, plumbing over here on this side, and then take those those two offices on the north end by that double door and turn them into a nice restroom for the 10 or 11 women who work in here. And then we would lock that back door, we would change that door out to be more secure, and then this building would be secure, and then we'll begin working on the MLRC building. During a working day, the only way to get in this building would be for the only way to get in this building is going to be through the front door and you got to be buzzed in. We will then change that platform out there and we'll put a uh, ramp that is handicap accessible because right now there's a railing out there and you can't open those outside doors without having to step off. So we're just going to redo that whole platform out there and um, make this and then put handicap parking over there. So that everybody, and, you know, cut out the sidewalk so there's a there's a space, and we'll remove the sidewalk that goes from the porch to the road because it's yeah. it's ir it's irrelevant and redundant now because we don't have anybody out there. And you're starting on this tomorrow. Starting on this tomorrow. Great. Good deal. Very good. And that will uh, then you can go to closed session. That will take us into closed session. The time is now. <laughs> Now, Mr. Mr. Uh, Fleener, yes, sir. I need you to remind all of the principals who were told this was going to be an extremely lengthy meeting that in one hour and seven minutes, he's already gaveling you all for you to go home. Well, so are you saying thank you, Mr. Fleener, for being the only principal? That showed up? <laughs> I am that, sir. Yes, I just to make sure that you were aware of that. Duly noted. <laughs> That, that, that is definitely the truth. <laughs> so. The time is now 8.07. We'll adjourn to the closed meeting under Texas Government Code. Uh, five, five, four, three, two, four, seven, mm -hmm. personnel matters. Now, Will, when we come back. Time is now 8.27. We'll reconvene in open meeting. First item that uh, there is no action out of closed session. Then the first item we'll discuss a little bit for a brief moment of time will be the summer leadership institutes that the board uh, attended for uh, continue, continuing education. Um, I can summarize that those. Can I say something before you summarize? Yeah. I just want to commend all of you for going to this to take some time out of your personal lives to go get <coughs> trained. Um, I know it's difficult to find time in your busy lives, but y'all have been committed and uh, dedicated to the district to do this. And for that, I want to commend you. And I um, think that as a board, you're an exceptional group of people that do are do, trying to do the best things you can for the students and the staff. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. I don't normally think we're exceptional until you go to something like that and you find how dysfunctional some of these other schools. Oh, I'm sure. I can. I can. I mean, All those sessions about them not getting along. I'm like, wow. Half the sessions. Half the sessions. Yes. The topics are yes. completely about, about boards. school boards that don't get along. Don't get along. Oh, and then the, what was it? One that I was telling you about that they were F's and F's. Oh, uh, campus. Yeah. DeSoto. And, DeSoto, yeah, and then they have to recapture like 18 million, I don't know, yeah. some ungodly yeah. amount of money, and I was thinking, oh my word, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. There's, there are a lot of districts that are in both academic pro uh, peril and financial peril, and then we're, yeah. we're lucky that we're not. And, and our most, hotel accommodations were wonderful. Mostly. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Very thank you. Nice.
Yeah, most most of those most of the districts. It was just right across the. Um, so the problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most, so most of the districts with bad problems yeah. have bad boards that don't don't get along. Oh, okay. so it's nice to not have that issue. Is there anything anything specific y'all saw you wanted to discuss tonight? Or there was a lot of things we took in. It's nice to go to that kind of stuff. We obviously we didn't go to all the all the dysfunctional stuff. We went to. School safety was a couple of them. Uh, there was some interesting uh, ways to take care of uh, your staff and that kind of thing. They were kind of out of the box thinking that you know kind of gets gets the wheels turning about hey, maybe some of those ideas could be applied in El Campo. Uh, so it's it's worth yeah. worth the time. So I went to the, the general session on Friday morning, waiting on some other stuff, but the mom. Saint Edith was the presenter. Mm -hmm. Awful. Yeah, she's a great presenter, but and they moved to that school because of the safe and right. pleasant wow. environment that it was. She had two kids there and one of them was killed. Awful. Oh. I think you know, I think I think the whole world is a little more prepared as far as the schools go now than when we were at Sandy Hook. She dropped her daughter off, and the dude was behind her. She didn't know it till later, but she pulled off, and he walked in the building. That's awful. Uh, any other questions? No, I just need help inputting my courses. You better do it now. Don't do it. I can't do it no more. Yeah, there's a window or something. That you can email them the like email them to Bob because the official record is. Cassie actually will input the information. If it passes that window, then you just have to email them and they'll input it for us. We didn't. It wasn't even muted on the phone. I will point out that, that there's no continuing education to serve in the U.S. House or U.S. Senate. You don't have to do, you, know, <laughs> you, do, not, you do not have to do continuing education, but to be, an okay school, to be a school board member, with no, no pay, you do have to do continuing education. So, uh, Very nice news. We have good news. <laughs> yes, and I did. On the uh, last thing, uh, superintendent's report, anything? He has I think I, get, share. I try to do that all in the presentations now so that we can let all those people be. You want to take it off the agenda so we can do it? I think we better put it on the keep it on the agenda in case there's something we've forgotten at the end of the meeting. We can always you can kind of pick that up. If that's okay with everybody, I, I've just been trying to get them to be able to go home. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of going good. home, it is now 18, 832, and there being no business, further business to come before the board. Thank <laughs> you.